this is John Colo with DiscountJuicers.com to do another exciting episode for you. In this episode, long awaited episode for many of you guys, since you guys have been searching on this brand new juicer that the medical medium, Anthony William, has now been promoting. It's the all new Omega MM900HDS. And so I'm going to do a review of that video, but not before I get into some very important details about this new Omega juicer, as well as my favorite Omega juicer, as well as determining the best juicer for celery once and for all. All right, so stay tuned to this video. It will be long, and I'm giving you guys a heads up, right? Maybe jump to the end if you guys want to hear my conclusion uh, to what I'm finding out. But basically, I'm going to start here. So as you guys know, medical medium Anthony William, he's created such the buzz around celery juice, right? And he recommends straight celery juice in the morning, at least minimum 16 ounces, not diluted with anything, cold, pressed, fresh made. Drink it right then and there for the best possible results. And as such, because he recommends it so much and I get so many inquiries about it, being a juicing expert, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, and being into a healthy fruit and vegetable dominated lifestyle now for the last 25 years and juicing now with these and other many juicers over the years for the last 25 years, I have my own opinions on this, but here's what I'm going to say. Number one is as much as celery is an amazing vegetable and has many, contains many different phytonutrients and phytochemicals and micronutrients that can be health beneficial, I believe that every different plant, including the wild blueberries that he also promotes, as well as brassica family plants, broccoli sprouts, wheatgrass, um, different, all different kinds of fruits and vegetables have their healing potential and to only include one and to exclude the others, I think is not wise in my opinion. So in my personal diet, I eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, including growing them, Some of many of them actually in my backyard so I can have the highest quality stuff. All right, that's number one. Number two is let's get into why the medical medium is promoting the MM900. Now I don't, I can't read his mind. I don't have somebody talking into my ear, giving me information from the ethos or from wherever, um, but I do have his recent um, blog post um, and or I guess he sent out an email blast and basically he has a post that says uh, best juicer for celery juice and I'm going to read off a couple highlighted points of this I'm not going to read the whole thing um, it says the best juicer for juicing celery is a cold pressed masticating juicer masticating juicers more gently and slowly extract the juice from celery and do not generate as much heat during the juicing process this helps preserve as much of the nutrients in your celery as possible and minimize oxidation so I definitely would agree with that on some levels. On some levels, I would actually disagree with that. I'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, but I have, uh, number one, he says, the best juicer for juicing celery is a cold press. So I would definitely agree with that. The best juicer for juicing celery is a cold press or maybe even our teeth. I do have a video showing how you don't even need to buy a juicer to juice your celery. If I remember, I'll put a link down below to that video. Um, you could use a food processor or a blender. I do not recommend blending your celery highly oxidized the ju juice, uh, the celery juice, also a pain in the butt to use, and you're gonna lose significant phytonutrients based on scientific studies, and that's the other thing. You know, everything that I'm gonna share with you guys in this video is not just necessarily my opinions about things, but it's me putting my money where my mouth is, you know, as in one famous movie, show me the money, Jerry, right? Talk is cheap, you could easily write a blog post to say this juice is the best, or this or that, but I seriously prove it in my videos. You know, just a couple of videos ago, I got a video talking about scientific research, documented, proven studies in the scientific journals about the benefits of juicing of a wide variety of different fruits and vegetables. I have a video entitled The Best Juicer for Celery where I test four common styles, the most common popular masticating and high speed juicer for juicing celery. And you guys get to watch the results in front of your eyes. I'm not doing any trick photography. I'm, just showing you guys that it is and giving you guys my expert commentary based on me juicing for the last 25 years and using the appliances and being a distributor for all the different major brand juicers out there. I don't just sell Omega, I don't just sell this brand or that brand, right? I sell all the major brands and I like to think I have a more impartial view about things and very pragmatic approach if you guys watch my videos. All right, uh, so that's number two. And then uh, let's go ahead and continue on. It says, my favorite masticating juicer for celery juice is the MM900HDS, Omega Low Speed Masticating Celery Juicer. It's so good, we have licensed our name for use on this model. All right, so I wanna stop right there. He licensed his name to use on this model. I don't see his name on here specifically, but it is MM900. Does that stand for medical medium? The world will never know. 
Although that is, he says he licensed our name for the use on this model, the medical medium name. So what is in a license? Like if you're Disney, you can license your products to a third party company and they could manufacture a little Disney stuff, toys or Mickey Mouse or whatever. And then either they pay you like a lump sum or probably more smart would be to basically every little plush Mickey Mouse toy you sell that you make that you say Disney's Mickey Mouse, you have to pay us $2, $5, $10, $20, whatever it is. Right, so I don't know if he got a one-time fee or more than likely if it was me, I would want to get a licensing fee where every juicer you sell Omega, you got to give me $25 or $15. To end up. I mean, I don't know how much it is, but that's the kind of licensing deal I want. So I don't know what kind of licensing deal he got. But basically, here's the thing. Uh, basically, that's telling you that he gets paid or there's some kind of monetary exchange between him and Omega, which I have no idea what it is. All right. And then it says... Uh, this juicer was specifically designed to extract as much juice as possible from celery, specifically more than any other juicer model. So that's a good question. And I don't know this yet because I haven't tested it yet, but I will be testing it later on this video and you guys are going to see in front of your eyes. Once again, check my video down below. You know, while the auger style juicers are very efficient at juicing celery, there are other juicers that may get higher yields than this style machine. That being said, they have a special patent pending um, attachment to this machine that makes this machine unique against all others out there on the market and does this little attachment that you're basically going to be paying extra for and losing some functionality in this juicer is it worth it and that's the question I hope to answer in this video for you guys all right let's go ahead and continue on I think I have like one more space I want to talk about in his little blog post or email blast it says uh, masticating juicers such as this one also juice celery with very little heat being generated all right. So to me, that statement is completely dogmatic. It is what is out there on the Internet and it is what is continually repeated on an ever going and non ending basis. And it's my personal opinion that it is completely false. And I'm here to dispel the myths about heat creation in juicers. That's very important to me because I have not found this personally to be true. And I'm not just going to tell you that there's heat generated in juicers. I actually juice in different kinds of juicers and I use a, a, a heat gun, infrared thermometer to test the juice and how hot it gets. So while some juicers can increase a heat rise by a little bit, some juicers actually will keep it the same or even potentially make the juice a bit colder after it's made. So it has not been my experience that juicers heat, unless you're using a steam juicer, um, heat the juice any significant amount to significantly damage the juice. I'll put a link down below. If I remember to a video where I basically test this theory um, on different produce items, juicing the same exact produce at the same temperature it's in different juicers so you guys can see the truth about this. So that alone, if somebody's repeating dogma, in my opinion, that to me as a juicing expert does not give me a lot of confidence in what they're saying. And this is just my personal opinion. Now, John, why do you consider yourself a juicing expert? You know, I'm not an expert on a lot of things, but I like to say I am a juicing expert. And why do I say this? Well, number one, I've been juicing now for 25 years straight. In addition, when I was a young child, my parents had bought a juicer uh, for us as kids, and we got to use that even more so. But I've literally been in business now for the last tw uh, over 20 years now, um, selling juicers to people and testing them, comparing them, first through online comparison charts. And now I have over 500 episodes on this YouTube channel dedicated to comparing and contrasting different juicers and appliances that best allow you to maximize the nutrition out of your fruits and vegetables so that you guys can eat more of them because they, like the medical medium, will explain, are the healthiest foods on the entire planet. And, you know, I have, I go out and buy juicers and I test them. Many of them I make videos about, some of them I don't, and I have a wall collection of juicers. I'm probably single because I have too many juicers in my house and have no wife or maybe girlfriend would even put up with me on all the crazy juicers I get in and out. I'm just trying to get rid of them and companies are sending me new ones and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I definitely, I mean, I don't know anybody else in the world that has tested as many juicers or publicly made that available as I have. Um, and so that's why I would consider myself an expert. And in addition, I juice basically, if I'm not traveling, pretty much every day. I mean, maybe every other day. But pretty much every day I'm using a, one juicer or another juicer to basically make my juice that I live on. It's part of my diet and in my opinion should be part of a healthy diet on an everyday and non-going basis and a rotation of different juices. And I'll even say this, you know, 
John, do you drink celery juice in the morning? What results have you seen? So I've been drinking like, I never started drinking straight celery juice until the medical medium said so. Um, but I, and I did keep that up for many months. Um, I, I had always been using celery in my juices to get the benefits. And I've been juicing like celery cucumber, which was my favorite like morning time recipe in some, some cases. But I always switch up whatever I'm juicing. And nowadays I'm actually not even drinking celery juice straight in the morning. Actually, that's my second juice because my first juice of the day, which I already got done making, is actually a ginger turmeric lemon juice and I have about two and a half to three ounces a day shot like after I get hydrated from maybe drinking water in the morning I have that lemon turmeric uh, you know ginger shot in the morning and then my next juice generally is 24 ounces of celery which I haven't drank today because I'm waiting to make this video for you guys so then I can drink my celery juice all right so uh, let's go ahead and continue on. When a juicer generates too much heat in the juicing process, it oxidizes the celery and diminishes its nutritive value more quickly. So in my opinion, and based on research studies that I've personally seen and also have shared on my YouTube channel, um, it's not necessarily the heat that's damaging the juice. People think, yeah, you, you cook stuff, you're heating it up, you're killing enzymes. But the juicers only maybe change the temperature of the juice a few degrees. It's not anything significant. It never gets over, you know, I don't know, 100 degrees or something, you know, when juicing, unless you're really doing something wrong. Um, so that's not consideration in my opinion. But what is a consideration, I, I'm I do glad they mentioned this, is oxidation. So oxidative damage is huge. It is now being proven in science that a juice made in a high-speed juicer or even a blender that's not under vacuum, which is a whole other topic, um, you can significantly reduce some of the antioxidant-specific nutrients in that juice such as polyphenols and antioxidant vitamins, such as vitamin C, for example, right? But I think vitamin A also can be affected by the oxidative damage. And that's generally caused by the high-speed air being infiltrated in the juice that is being made with most inexpensive, low-cost juicers. That means you might buy at a local big-box store near you. These are the common-style juicers that are available, and that's why I recommend a masticating, and I didn't even really like the term masticating. Masticate means be, to chew, and the only true masticating juicer out there is a champion, but it doesn't even do a good job at that, in my opinion, either, and so I don't even sell champion anymore. I like the cold press style or screw or twin gear style juicers are my favorite. If you check out my other videos, I have plenty of videos on this topic, all right? So yeah, so I mean, when they say the heat thing, like that really turns me off, but anyways, I mean, basically, he just goes on to promote and gives links and blah, 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 and his buy the juicer, it's the best. And is, once again, I kind of wonder, is that because he has a licensing deal with Omega, and is this juicer really better? I don't know. So if you watch my video entitled, The Best Juicer for Celery, where I compare four different style juicers, you know, my favorite juicer is actually a vertical juicer for juicing celery, and that's what I personally use in my house, and there's a reason for that, right? You have to watch that video uh, for that. In addition, I'll put a couple links down below for uh, my second favorite juicer uh, for juicing celery, which would be this one because it's very easy to clean. It's the Omega NC800. Put a link also down below where I juice celery in this machine so you can see the entire process and determine if a vertical or a horizontal juicer would be a better fit for you. And the other thing I want to talk about is how do you define best? What is best juice? Everybody wants just like the single answer, you know, What's the best girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife or what's the best car? What's, I mean, it just depends. Like if you have a family of six, right? The best car is not a two-seat sports car with a convertible T-top or convertible or T-top because you can't take your kids around in that unless you stuff them in the trunk <laughs> and, sh and sh lock them in there, which is probably illegal. Um, you'd want to get a minivan. And likewise, if you guys like are a construction worker, right? You can't be, you know, you know and, and you're having to work every day <laughs> like all of us folks. You can't be having like a sedan because you can't get your two by fours, or your four by eight sheets in your trunk of a sedan. Maybe you could tie it on the roof, but you'd want to get a truck, right? So you can just easily put all your gear, all the materials, building materials in the back of the truck easily and simply. And you know, so what is your particular criteria in calling it the best? Is best mean to you just the highest yield, John? I just want the highest yield and I don't care about anything else. Well, is that highest yield? you know, maybe make the highest yield, but then also you're oxidizing the heck out of the juice. Then is that juice any good, even though you're making the highest yield, but now, you know, it's, it's, it's oxidized to heck, and now you're not going to get the, the healing properties out of it, in my opinion? Or is the best mean to you, I want the easiest to clean juicer junk, because juice and celery is already paying the butt, 
And if it's not easy to clean, like I want the easiest to clean juicer, and if it's not the not easiest to clean, I'm not gonna use it, right? Or does best mean to you has a long warranty? So you can simply buy a juicer on a lot of different websites these days for pretty inexpensive, but they might have a short 90-day or maybe one year warranty if you're lucky, and the company probably is not gonna be in business because a lot of the juicers are imported from China in this day and age, and they're not good quality, or so does good or best mean to you, it has a long warranty to be supported by an American-based company that's been in business for a long time now. So, you know, you, you kind of get what I'm going at here, right? You know, does best mean to you, it's going to save me time when juicing because celery juice takes so long. I want to make have the juice done in the minimum amount of time but the highest quality, you know, with the lowest price, with the longest warranty, right? And that's kind of what it means to me. You know, there's a lots of factors that turn into the term best. And in addition, you know, when somebody asks you, John, what's the best juice for celery? I just send them to my video. Why? Because I, I play no favorites. I don't say this juice is the best, that juice is the best. In certain respects, every juicer can be best for selling. For example, if you want the highest yield, highest nutritional quality, I'm going to say, don't even get this guy. Get a Green Star Pro Juicer. That's going to make the highest quality, highest yield because it grinds up better. The challenge with that machine is that it is more expensive, but it also takes longer to clean and probably to use as well. You know, so I explained that. You know, if you want to juice in the fastest time, make a really good yield, then you want to use a vertical juicer because on these horizontals, you have to shove in each produce item. If you don't want to pre-cut your, uh, your celery before juicing, then you want to get one of these items because of vertical juicers, you got to pre-cut the celery. As I show in the video down below, how to juice celery in a vertical juicer. And if you don't want to pre-cut, don't get a vertical juicer. That's all right. Then get a horizontal juicer. You can push each item through, right? In my time trials, because I test the time on how long it takes me to juice, right? The vertical juicer saved about a half a minute in juicing. And to me, that's important because I do juicing in big batches. I'll generally juice, um, you know, like... Uh, Enough for the next three days, I'll juice today and then tomorrow and the next day that I'll store vacuum seal on the fridge. You want to learn how to store your juices the best in the fridge so you don't have to make it every day, although the medical medium says drink it fresh every day. Um, check the link down below for that, right? And I just do the best I can because I'm a working guy, just like all you guys. I, and I got a lot of things to do in my life, all right? So yeah, how do you define best? We're going to learn about the yield on this machine, but we're also going to learn about some things that are cool about this machine and some things that are not so good about this machine because, you know, here's the thing. I tell it like it is, and I basically show it to you guys as well. So, you know, talk is cheap, but, you know, showing you guys on a video means a lot more to me, and that's the kind of person I live, lead my how I lead my life. And I want to thank you guys actually for staying and watching up to this point because this shows me that you researched the MM900, and you're not just going to go ahead and buy it because the medical medium says so, and that means you're going to be able to take your diet a lot further than the people that just buy it based on his recommendation, because you are a researcher, and I would like to call you guys a health researcher, and that's the kind of person I am too, because I, as much as somebody says something, I don't necessarily believe it, I want to experience it from my own eyes, and that's why I would recommend you guys, if you guys haven't started celery juice, start it and see what happens for you. In addition, as long as you're going to buy a juicer to juice celery, I would highly encourage you guys to use your juicer for juicing other items as well as other functions. Maybe the juicer could do other functions, like this guy, or maybe it can't, like the MM900, as you guys will learn, because that can significantly increase the amounts of fruits and vegetables, which are the best foods on the planet, into your diet by just some of the appliances that you own, all right? So with that, let's get into introducing both these machines. <laughs> On this side, we got the Omega MM900 HDS. What does MM stand for? I don't exactly know. I can only guess that it means medical medium, but I don't know. 900 is the model number. The HDS, what does that mean? HD stands for heavy duty, and that's a heavy duty single auger in there. And the S stands for silver, which means it's a silver color juicer. All right. Over on this side, we have the NC800 HDS. What does NC stand for? It stands for nutrition center because this machine could do more than just juice. It is a complete a nutrition solution, so you can include more fresh fruits and vegetables and other plant foods in your diet. 800 is the model number. HDS, once again, it's heavy duty auger, and its color is silver. For the S, they also have an, um, if, it's, if it's a C, they have a NC900 HDC, which is exactly the same as the NC800 HDS, but it's in chrome um, plated plastic instead of silver color. So if you want things to look upscale, get the NC900, same performance, and same things apply. It will cost you about $50 more than this machine, although the performance is exactly the same. Just because this number is higher, 900 than 800, doesn't necessarily mean this one's better than that one. Omega just has a weird, you know, model number system, all right? Now, the next thing I'm going to say, which is very important to me, is the warranty. 
Both these machines are made by Omega. Omega has now been in business, I think, uh, 35 years in the United States. American owned and operated, been in business for 35 years. They're one of the oldest juicing companies still in existence. I could maybe only count two juicing companies that may be even older than Omega that are still in existence in today that are like born here in America, unlike a lot of companies that are selling juicers or just maybe important stuff from China. You know, so Omega is a solid company, and both these machines have the longest warranty in this industry, 15 full years of warranty, right? And this, to me, is very important. You know, should your juicer break after a year, like you buy an inexpensive juicer, even if you're paying less for it, it breaks after a year, you have no warranty, and even worse, the company disappears, or they're no longer making that model. Omega has a long-standing tradition of supporting many of their juicers for years after that model. If it is discontinued, although a lot of these models like this, I don't think they could ever discontinue this model or this model because they are so prominent and basically the bread and butter of Omega, in my personal opinion, all right? Now, I know some of you guys have read Omega reviews online, and John, Omega says they don't do their customer service, and people have complained about that. So, I mean, I've read those two reviews, too, on different websites and stuff, but I can tell you guys this, and I can look you guys straight in the eye. If you guys buy your juicer from discountjuicers.com, right, and I advertise because Omega advertises the warranty is 15 years, right, I will guarantee that you guys get your warranty provided the, the company is still in business and provided that it, it is a legitimate warranty claim, right? If you buy it from any other company, I can't do this for you guys because if you buy it from me, I feel a commitment to you that you know you have a working juicer so that you can make your life changes. That's why I got into juicing many years ago. I almost lost my life due to complement immune deficiency, which is basically a, you know, a depressed and chronic immune system based on genes and also the foods I was eating, and I turned that around through juicing and know it can help you so much, and that's why I only recommend and offer juicers that have long warranties that are good, solid machines that are gonna last you for many years, so you guys can get the benefits for many years. So amortize the price of this machine, divided by 15 years, I mean, it comes out to like $20 or thereabouts per year, which is not a big investment, or you could buy a cheap juicer for $100, $150, or whatever they sell for, and then has a one-year warranty, and if it fails after one year, you gotta buy another $100, $150 juicer the next year to keep going because your product may all find parts for it. So I want you guys to you know, buy into a machine that's gonna you know, be a good quality machine that you're gonna be able to use for many years to come, and you know, I can't, if you buy your juicer from anywhere else, I can't tell you that you're gonna get good service, but I know that all my customers, right, First, contact Omega. That's the first step. That's a chain of command to get your warranty service. I had a customer today that contacted Omega. This is John. I called Omega. I was on hold for 15 minutes. I talked to him. They sent me the part. Maybe you got to pay a small shipping fee or whatever. And he was totally happy with the service because he actually originally emailed me to buy the part. <laughs> John, where can I get this part? It broke on my juice. I'm like, hey, if you buy it for me, it should be covered under warranty. Call Omega. And then if he called Omega and they didn't take care of him, then he would basically just email me and say, John, I called him. They didn't take care of me. And then I'd say, well, what happened? I'd find out, and then I'd basically escalate your situation to my special contacts at Omega to ensure that your situation is resolved. And you know, other companies, frankly, don't care about you as much and don't have the connections that I do because I'm the largest independent dealer in the United States that I'm aware of selling juicers at this time. Um, so yeah, I could offer this to you guys. And I want to thank you guys who will support me because of that feature, but also because you appreciate my videos. If I've helped you determine the right juicer, if I've helped you cut through the BS of buying the right juicer, whatever it may be for you, I would encourage you guys to support me and my work. I go through lots of time and effort to edit and create and film videos to share with you guys, you know, the, the demonstrations that I do comparing the exact same amounts of produce to each and in, in juicing it in each juicer so that you guys can benefit, but also so that I can know because this is what I do with my life and I love doing this, right? This is my lifestyle. I don't just sell juicers. I can sell any widgets in the world if I wanted to, but I'm really passionate about juicers because they've helped me so much as well as helped thousands of my customers across the, the years, the last 20, 20 years now that I've been selling them. And I know they can help you guys too if you guys get the right juicer and start using it and especially use it to how I say specifically in my videos, I don't make up things. I mean, sometimes I get an email, John, I bought your juicer that you recommended. I use it for sale. It didn't work. Well, did you follow my exact direction? That's very important, right? Some of the directions that I like to share in my videos are not in the instruction books, unfortunately, because I find the best way to do things. And that's what I share with you guys so that you guys don't have to waste time other than investing your time to watch my videos. So I want to thank you guys in advance who will purchase from me. 
And, uh, you know, thank you guys who have purchased from me in the past. Once again, link is down below the video uh, to the NC800 HDS model that we are now selling, as well as the NC900 HDC model, which we also sell. At present time, when this video is being created, January 2020, we are not selling the MM900 uh, HDS. As far as I'm aware, only Omega is selling that directly, um, you know, and I don't exactly know the reason for that at this time. So, uh, but I hope to be able to sell this in the future or have some kind of other alternative if you really want to get this model after watching this video. All right, so here's the thing. This is basically a multi-purpose juicer. It, it can juice more than celery. It can juice celery juice, carrot juice, wheatgrass juice, fruit juices, vegetable juices, leafy green juices, higher yield than other juicers it claims on the box. Well, we're going to find that out. Um, and then over on this side, this is the NC900 HDS, and this will juice the same exact thing because it works the same exact way. But in addition, as I will point out, this one also has the ability to do things like um, mince herbs, make baby food, nut butters, extreme pasta, grind coffee, and make sorbet. And that's something that MM900 does not have. Unfortunately, you lose that capability because you are being able to get the higher yield on celery. So is it worthwhile to you to get maybe a little bit higher yield on celery? And I don't know how much that is until we complete this video. Maybe it's going to be 10% more. Maybe it won't. And maybe that difference is negligible because you can always reduce your pulp afterwards, which I'll be showing you guys. Um, so that you can now, now you can't make your own nut butters or can't make baby food or you can't make ground coffee if you're still drinking coffee. And you can't make your own frozen fruit sorbets out of wild blueberries and bananas, which are which is incredible, which basically comes out like soft serve ice cream so that you can eat healthier, right? You're going to lose all those capabilities in the MM900 HDS, but get gain those in the NC800. And to me, those capabilities are amazing. If you ever had frozen banana ice cream or if it's 100% frozen bananas, it's completely amazing. If you guys are still eating ice cream, I encourage you guys to get this model so you can get off the ice cream with all the monodiglycerides and you know sugars added to it so that you can eat more fresh fruits, especially those high antioxidant fruits that the medical medium provides. So, uh, and these are both made for household use. Very important, this is not for commercial use. So I guess with that, let's go ahead and unbox these guys and show you guys what comes with each machine. So over on this side, the MMM900 HDS. This is a pretty basic box. If you don't like a lot of parts, you're gonna like this machine because it's pretty simple in what it comes with, all right? Number one, we got the main motor body. Now, here's the thing. Is this Omega motor body, is this unique to the MM900 HDS or can you get it in some other way? So, let's take a look underneath, right? Not, may, Omega may not be, like me saying this, but I just tell the truth and I just share what it is and it says on the bottom, the model of this is the J8006 HDS. So this is the 8006 motor base, right, in an MM900 box with maybe a, a few different parts than the 8006 HDS, right? And so the H1008 HDS does not have this special part that I'll pull out right now, which is this part. This is the patent pending celery extraction knob that may get higher yields on celery. I haven't tested this yet, but I would expect that to be true because they do have a patent on it. Um, so you, this does not come with the 8000, J8006 HDS. And on our website, we don't even sell the J8006 HDS. I probably will add it to the website there. But I'll tell you guys personally that the J8006 HDS is the same exact thing as the model we sell as the Omega 8007. And the 8007 costs about $40 less than the J8006 HDS. So it would behoove you to buy the 8007 because it's the same exact model as this, once again, without this attachment. But you're going to get that sorbet attachment, nut butter baby food attachment that also comes with the ANC 800 HDS. So I hope you guys follow that, all right? So yeah, this is the special part that you're gonna get, oops, <laughs> only with uh, this machine right here. Next, we have the main motor body housing, and this is uh, pretty much a standard housing that comes with the J8006 HDS, including the standard outlet knob, uh, which is right here, all right? And then this is the special knob, with a little green insert that's said to get a higher yield on celery. In addition, you have a pusher to push the produce in. You get a standard cleaning brush here, and you get a uh, the catch cups right here. You catch your juice and the pulp, and then you have basically your warranty package with the book. 
Now I do want to give you guys a disclaimer because I know a lot of you guys, this is important to you. If you look on the bottom of the box, and that's where you will find your UPC code, the serial number is on the bottom of the juicer, um, they do have a little warning on here and it says, this product can expose you to bisphenol A, which is known to the state of California to cause birth defects and other reproductive harm. For more information, go to p65warnings.ca.gov, all right? So all Omega juicers will ha now have this warning on there. I can't tell you why it does that, but it says, you know, I want you guys to be aware this product can expose you to bisphenol A. It does not say does expose you to bisphenol A. Uh, that being said, I am more concerned with the bisphenol A or other plasticizers in food packaging where the food sits in there for you know months or years before you eat it such as the inside lining of pla of uh, metal cans that have the BPA that the food's literally sitting in the can leaching out BPA and or something like a w plastic water bottle with the water sitting in the bottle before you drink it whereas in this case you're putting produce through the machine it has momentary contact with some of the plastic parts it comes out and as you guys will see I don't even use like these plastic catch containers that it comes with I catch my juice into glass containers um, I don't know why exactly Omega is putting that on there because other juice companies that make similar juicers actually may even uh, you know uh, promote their juicers as being virtually BPA free versus Omega has the warning I could only believe and think that they're doing this because of the lawyers and legal reasons and California and the laws that they have there so um, that's all I'm going to say about that so that's the box that's all you're going to get so it's pretty basic you know you got the juicer here you got your juice catch cup your pulp catch cup you got your cleaning brush your standard outlet adjusting knob <laughs> and you have that special celery knob all right and you got your instructions and warranty packet 15 years next let's go ahead and pull out the Omega NC 800 see what this guy comes with all right this is more of a deluxe package here so here you got a lot bigger motor body and this is my personal unit so it's a little bit uh well used and on the bottom of this one it says a uh, nc 800 s <laughs> that's coming right out right here and then you also have plastic collection cups so to me these plastic collection cups are definitely more upscale they look to collect actually a little bit bigger so like this is the pulp collection, this is the pulp collection, and this is the juice collection, and this is the juice collection. I much rather like the looks of these guys, a little bit more upscale and potentially a bit longer, larger. Of course, this juicer is also larger. This is a little bit more compact. That's important to you. And next coming out, we got the same kind of like, uh, you know, um, juicing base right here, as well as an outlet adjusting knob that actually has numbers on it, whereas this does not have any numbers on it. And this does not have any kind of special celery attachment. But what it does come with, it comes with these, um, it comes with also a cleaning brush right here, pretty much the same cleaning brush. And then you also will get your warranty and uh, instruction book here, 15 year warranty on this model as well. But in addition with the Omega NC 800 uh, HDS at, as well as the Omega 8007 or Omega uh, J8006 HDS, which is basically the same model as this, deleted, deleting the celery attachment, but including these parts right here. This is known as the blank plate or the homogenizing, uh, you know, screen that allows you to make the things such as the sorbets, the nut butters, the baby foods. I've made salsa in here. It allows you to grind coffee, mince your herbs up. Really handy, and I would hate to lose this feature because it is so very important to me. In addition, you get these other different um, knobs that go on the end of this juicer here to basically extrude pasta and, uh, you know, do some other features. So that's what you're going to miss out on the MM900. I'm not going to demonstrate this. I do have other videos where I demonstrate this. It is completely amazing. And for me personally, I don't think a small yield and increase for, uh, of celery juice um, is worth it to give up this part, which in my opinion is a lot more valuable, all right? So uh, that's pretty much that. Let's go ahead and uh, you know, put some of these parts away, get rid of this box, and let's dive more into the differences and similarities between these two machines. Alright, next let's go ahead and compare these units side by side, piece by piece, so you guys could learn the differences and similarities between these two machines. Alright, so number one, um, pulling this off, you have basically the outlet cap, and the outlet cap has two components. Oh, this guy's a little bit tight. Um, basically, um, you have uh, this little adjustment knob on the end, and this is the outlet adjusting knob. It can adjust from zero um, to five on this unit, and on five, it basically puts maximum back pressure on the pulp, 
uh, so that you're going to get the highest yield. So you want to always set this to five if you're juicing the celery. If you're juicing something like fruits, you're going to put it to zero and or even remove it altogether, okay? And then over on the um, MM900, this is the standard stock knob that you get. And instead of having numbers, it has basically like this little like uh, pattern the going from a little bit to a lot. And I think the, uh, once again, this is like in lieu of numbers. So you, if you want to crank it down to like the, the lot or the, the widest uh, little bar here, that's going to put, as the same as the number five, that's going to put the maximum back pressure. So this is what you'd normally use for celery if you didn't have a special celery attachment. This is what you're going to use for juicing other vegetables such as carrots, wheatgrass, and whatnot. And you could loosen it on up all the way to lighter if you're juicing fruits to like the little bars or like no bars or even potentially remove it. But other than that, these pieces are pretty much the same, right? No, now I want to share with you guys actually one major difference between these machines is where the machine is made, right? This machine is being made in South Korea and this machine is being made in China. So uh, generally I like to think that the South Korean made machines are a bit higher quality than the machines made in China. This is my personal opinion and what I've seen based on customer feedback. You know, I've seen that there's a lot more challenges with the machines from China, but not with Omega. They're already high quality machines and they got lots of the bugs worked out. And the most challenging part of this machine that you're going to see break the most is honestly uh, the juicing screen right here. So here's a juicing screen on the um, MM900. Here is a juicing screen on the NC800. Uh, you guys can see they're, they look pretty much the same. There are a few minor differences, all right? So on this screen, the first stage of the screen uh, where the juice comes out after it's initially pressed is stainless steel. Over on this machine, it's a uh, plastic. And then uh, further on down, they have a second stage screen, which is a stainless steel, and a second stage screen, which is stainless steel. In addition, on this machine, you will also see reinforcements here. So this, to me, would mean that this machine, this machine has a bit stronger uh, plastic housing due to these reinforcements here that is not quite as rel relatively apparent on this machine. You basically have like a nice ring right here as well as these two fins that add structural stability uh, you know, to the screen. Um, let's see, looking at the screen technically itself, um, side by side, if we could compare them, it looks like the screen area is maybe a little bit bigger on the uh, a little bit, not by much, on the NC800, which may allow uh, well, the, the secondary screen um, for more juice to come out. And of course, the uh, the whole size, a little bit, a little bit more area on the uh, MM900 for the first stage. Otherwise, they both have this little silicone kind of flap on the back side that basically uh, keeps the pulp in the juicer for longer to get it wrung out. Now, I do want to share real quick. Um, this celery attachment part, which basically you, you, it looks like you could put on and then you could rotate once again to the, you know, uh, light back pressure or most. So once again on this one, you're going to want to crank it down to the most when juicing celery. And what is the difference between this part and this is the part that you get that makes this machine, the MM900, everything else is the same as the J8006 HGS or 8007 that we sell. Once again, the link, link is down below if you want to get that machine, which is actually less, less lower in cost than the NC800, which I like, um, is this part right here. And the difference between these two parts is basically this little ring right here, as well as the size. So like you can see, this is a lot bigger area where the pulp could come out through, and this has been reduced to a smaller size. Don't recommend you guys use this for anything else other than celery, because that's what it's designed for. In addition, you have this little green part that will fall out on you. It has fallen out on me a lot. And what happens when it falls out? Well, it could go in two ways. It could go in this direction, Right, which if you put it in this direction, it's totally flush against the back, which is the correct way to put it in. Or you could put it back in the other direction, which if you put it back in this direction, it sticks out a little bit. This is not the direction you want to put it. You want to put it in so that, um, you know, when you put it in, it, it is flush in there. So that when you basically put this in here, it's completely flush. Otherwise, it may uh, hit into the auger and cause damage and tear this little gasketing piece because you're putting it in backwards. It's very important. I don't know if they say this in the instruction manual because I don't read instructions. So I'm letting you guys know now, all right? Um, and I would encourage you guys always to read the instruction manual for your first use. Of course, if you watch my videos, you're going to get, in some cases, more information than the instruction manual will give you. And in some cases, I might miss a few things that the instruction manual says. So it's probably best to do both. 
And the next part on both these machines is the auger. This is the GE Ultra Auger, eight times harder plastic than auger. The augers used on previous machines, and if we just put these up side by side, they look to be almost about the same thing. Um, the augers are pretty much the same. Maybe the MM900 auger is a little bit larger and has a little bit different shape here at the end, um, and maybe not as aggressive treading or um, little canurals, if you call it canurals, uh, canurals on it than the um, NC800 auger does, okay? But pretty much the same thing. And how this machine works, it basically works by crushing and squeezing out, not necessarily chewing the juice. I don't know why people still call these masticating juicers. You put the produce in here, the, the, the produce goes into the auger, much like an old-fashioned meat grinder. And as the, uh, as the produce goes in, it run, runs down this auger, and the produce is literally crushed and squeezed, and the juice is literally squeezed out as it's being ground up. So on the initial crush, the juice comes out this bottom part, which then comes out the bottom which is stage one, and then the uh, juice then and the pulp travels down to the second stage and more pulp uh, you know, goes through the juicer and the juice comes out to get even higher yields. So that's how these guys work and once again both augers are basically the same thing for the most part as far as I am aware. Finally we have the main uh, juicing body that we could take off here put upside down. Now the difference about these guys is this funnel on the NC800 non-removable. It's stuck in place, which on one level I like, one level I don't like. And on, on this unit here, the funnel is completely removable. Uh, if we want to size these guys up, what funnel is larger? Well, to me, it, it's, it's pretty much evident that the funnel on the MM900 is a tad bit larger just due to the shape. In addition, it's a little bit deeper, which is a little bit nice. So if you're juicing something like cherry tomatoes or going to be putting through frozen sorbet or fr frozen wild blueberries to make your sorbet on this machine, which you can't do because you don't have the, the, the blank part anyways, um, that'll be helpful. But this is still functional. Now the other thing I want you guys to be really aware of is actually the feed chute size. This is very important to me because the larger feed chute means easier time juicing. Um, looks like to me that the feed chute on this unit here, the MM900, is about one and a half inches in diameter in a circle, whereas the feed chute on this guy here is basically, I don't know, I think a one and a half inches by maybe two inches or one and three quarter inches. So here's how we could test it, right? Here's the, the pusher on the MM900. It goes in here and it, uh, it pretty much, this pusher, even though it has a gasket on here, it doesn't really grab the entire um, housing here. It, there's a little bit of play in there, right? And if we do this same pusher here on this guy, it's also a little bit loose, but we could put it in here and then we still have a little gap so like it can move back and forth significantly more. So to me, that means this is going to be easier to use because you, you, sometimes you get a fat celery at the base. You could put them in a hole here where they're not, maybe not going to fit as easily into these two units over on this side, okay? Other than that, uh, these components, if we look at them side by side, you know, pretty much appear to be pretty much the same as one another, except for maybe the um, the thickness of some of the plastics. I don't really have my micrometer out today, but for all practical purposes, I mean, they look to be pretty much the, uh, the same thing right there, all right? And then finally, we have the motor base. On the motor base, it's nice and heavy. Um, this machine actually has a reset switch on the bottom, so if the, mach if the machine should be overloaded, this reset button will pop, which, I which is a feature I like. Um, this one is rated actually at um, 200 watt motor. And then over on this guy, this guy also very heavy, heavy duty motor. Um, this one has no reset switch on the bottom. I think it has a thermal reset or thermal overload that'll cut this off if it gets too hot. Um, likely this guy does also. And this one has a 150 watt motor, okay. Uh, this has been being made for the last seven years, so this is a time-proven model where this model came out more, you know, more recently, not quite as time-proven. And you're like thinking, John, you said that one's 200 watts, this one's 150 watts. 200 watts is more than 150 watts, so this watt's better. So try to tell that to somebody with solar panels on their house. They're going to say, I want the 150 watt model because it actually uses and consumes less electricity. So just because it pulls more watts does not necessarily mean the motor is better. It could be an inefficient motor. That being said, both these motors are sized appropriately to do the job at hand, 
which is juicing without stopping. They use gear reduction, so they're very efficient motors and work well. So I wouldn't necessarily say just because that's higher wattage means it's better. Um, let's see how it works when we're juicing in them. That's more important. So to assemble these guys are relatively easy. On the top, there's a collar that says uh, open and close. You can slide this to open and close. You want to have it on open, we're going to have this one on open, and you're just going to go ahead and put the, uh, the body assembly housing in there, and then you're going to rotate that to close, it's going to lock in place. We're going to do the same thing on the NC800, open to close. Next, we're going to go ahead and take the auger, the auger fits in all the way in the back. Don't be alarmed, the auger will not completely seat in the back, there will be a little maybe half inch gap between the back of the unit and the auger completely normal don't worry or be concerned if the auger does not go all the way back because there is a gap in there and it has been designed that way next you're going to take the screen the screen the second the first stage screen always is facing directly down never sideways or upside down you got to put the screen in facing down and it's going to slide in there all the way around and all the way back underneath that auger into the the main housing there, super simple, super easy. We're then going to take the uh, uh, main drum cap and we're going to put that on the unit. Once again, it's kind of like a keyed here, so you're going to put this to the open and slide it to the closed position. Same thing on the NC800. We're going to take this, slide that lock in there, slide it to the closed position, and then we're going to go ahead and take our outlet adjusting knob on the NC800. We're gonna go ahead and slide that into zero and then crank it all the way down to five so we have maximum um, yield on there. And on the MM900, we're not gonna use a standard outlet adjusting knob. We're gonna put that to the side. We're gonna test the celery outlet adjusting knob. That's what makes this unit special. We're gonna put that on. You gotta line up the arrow with a little circle and then we're gonna crank this all the way down um, to, to basically the, the most, which is one, two, three, four, which is five on the bar scale. So we have maximum back pressure. Of course, the pushers are different on these guys as well. Um, I kind of like this pusher. It's, like it, it, it's designed for this feed chute, which fits in easily. And on this guy, it won't even fit in because the feed chute is not that big. And this pusher just kind of goes in there um, like that. And yeah. So, I mean, these are both the juicers as they're set up. And I guess next, let's go ahead and get juicing the same amounts of celery in both juicers to find out which of these juicers is superior. All right, so as you guys can see, we are set up and all ready to juice. But the first step is to make sure we have a fair fight on these two Omega juicers. We've got to do a weigh-in. So i got even amounts of celery stocks off two heads, one on this side, one on this side. So it's basically the same, same amount of celery from each celery head in each um, container, let's go ahead and do the weigh in to make sure we have a fair fight. All right, over on the NC800 side, looks like we have a total of 774 grams of the organic celery that I'll be juicing today. And over on the MM900 side, HDS, looks like we also have 774 grams of organic celery. Once again, on both scales, you guys clearly see 774 grams on both sides so we do have a fair fight and let's get juicing all right so let's go ahead and get juicing we're going to go ahead and remove these off the scales we'll probably use the scales in just a little bit to measure the pulp that comes out of each machine we'll also be sieving out the juice after it comes out to uh, find out which juicer made more pulp in the juice and also which juicer made more strained juice um, as well so I guess the first step is we're going to go ahead and juice in the NC800, my favorite machine out of these two, um, just due to the higher build quality because this one is made in Korea, also due to the wider feed chute, also due to the fact over the um, MM900 that you get that homogenizing or mincing cone, whatever you want to call it, so you can make those baby foods, nut butters, sorbets, all that kind of good stuff. There's an on-off switch button on the back. We're gonna go ahead and turn this baby on. We're not gonna time this because both these machines run at a low and slow 80 RPMs. They sound about the same. Let me go ahead and turn this guy on for you so you could hear it. They basically sound the same, run at the same low RPMs. You're gonna get the same high quality juice out of each one. The question is, will this one make more because of that special end cap? We will see, all right? Let's go ahead and turn this machine on. And uh, juicing celery in any horizontal juicer is easy. Just put it in and actually check this out. This celery is pretty wide, so it fits in this chute because it's nice and wide. On this machine, it doesn't fit in. You gotta compress it down and it crunches it down. So to me, this means I can just drop that piece of celery in there 
and look it is being chewed off a little bit but on horizontal machines you do need to give a little bit of assistance and push it down in there unlike the verticals which I prefer because I can literally chop things up and drop it in so you got to push each item in and of course only use the pusher to push produce in the machine don't use a knife a hand a dog's paw or anything else right once again putting the next piece of celery in this is going to be pretty relatively in a, uneventful I mean it's basically just going to work these machines don't really stop now the most important thing to remember is only put in one stock of celery at a time very important and don't try to push excessively in there this will feed the celery through too fast which will cause excess stress on the parts which may cause part breakage as you guys can see I'm pushing one stock through at a slow and moderate pace these are called slow juicers um, let that process then we're going to take the next one once again it's another nice fat piece uh, pushing it right through look at the nice color on that celery juice man this is like florets not quite fluorescent green but really bright green because of the low RPM of this machine is oxidizing this the least as compared to a high speed machine which I'm not a fan of I uh, do all the air infiltration very little air infiltration in here and as you guys can see the pulp is just coming out quickly and easily out the outlet at the end here I guess to save you guys some time we're gonna go ahead and speed this up just a tad bit um, and we're gonna get done juicing this and we're gonna come back at you when I'm all done Alright, so here's a little last bit of a little heart celery heart that we're putting right in the machine. This machine is working pretty good. As you guys can see, we got a little bit of celery stuck up near the front of this machine, which is totally fine. It's going to go in. And, uh, you know, after you put the last produce in the machine, as you guys can see, we're totally out of celery here. Uh, you want to let this machine just run a little bit long. You don't want to just put that last piece in and turn off instantly. Um, as you guys can see there is still juice dripping out of the machine but uh, how do you know if it's done well if the pulp stops flowing out of the front of the machine which pretty much it stopped we're going to go ahead and put our pinky in to get all this extra pulp out um, pretty much you're done there we're going to let this uh, I think go ahead and turn this off and then the other thing I like to do is I like to tip this juicer forward up and backwards a little bit and that'll get a little bit more drips out of the juicer so this is the celery juice produced in the NC800. Next, let's go ahead and juice with the uh, MM900. Turn this baby on. Once again, same thing. We're just going to go ahead and take one stalk of celery. And look at this. This one's pretty wide. It doesn't fit in exactly that direction. So we got to like kind of basically break it to put it in. Uh, this feed chute, um, I'm not liking as much. It's a little more of a hindrance, especially due to some of this fat celery. And put this guy in, and we're gonna go ahead and use the pusher once again to uh, push that all the way in there. I guess this is gonna be pretty uneventful um, once again, so we're just gonna go ahead and save you guys some time to speed it up. Once again, put this in at a slow and moderate pace. Don't try to cram it in there as fast as you guys can. This is not a fast juicer, this is a slow juicer. Alright, so uh, yeah, once again, speeding this up, save you guys some time. We'll come back at you when I'm about done. Alright, so I've been juicing in the MM900 and it's actually been working fairly well. Uh, we just got that last little bit of celery or the heart we're going to go ahead and push in there. Um, this one has been backing a up a lot more in the feed chute assembly than the NC800. Also, if you guys look at this, you can see, you know, this one hasn't put out as much pulp and there's a lot more pulp in the NC800 uh, that has been generated, right? Now, because of all the back pressure in there, right, some of this celery just simply did not get juiced. In addition, due to the back pressure and the celery staying into the juicing chamber for longer, it looks like to me the celery juice is a little bit more brown, which to me means a little bit more oxidized. Um, oh, and actually, you know what? Oh, this is interesting. I could get my heat gun and measure this. This celery uh, coming out, the pulp, is a little bit warmer. Wow, that's significant. Let me go ahead and get my heat gun. Alright, so I know what's happening, but you guys don't know what's happening. This is my heat gun. We're going to go ahead and measure the pulp as it comes out of the MM900. It's it's at 74.5 74 degrees actually coming right out. And if we measure the pulp out of that 
and C 800, right? This is measuring 64 degrees. That's totally insane. 65 degrees, 64.5. So here's the thing, right? This pulp, although there's significantly less pulp, it's actually hotter. So this juicer, in my opinion, is heating the juice. It's heating it up. It's causing more oxidation because the pulp is sitting in there inside and spinning along. And why is there heat generated in a slow juicer? I didn't measure the celery previous, but definitely this is warm to the touch and that's why it set me off to this. The reason why this is happening is because the friction that is being created, because they have more back pressure on this little celery nozzle, which is advertised as a good thing, and actually it may be a good thing because it, it looks to, to me that it actually did make more juice, right? But now this juice, in my opinion, is more oxidized, the pulp coming out is warmer, that means the juice coming out also is a warmer, maybe by as much as 10 degrees. Let's go ahead and turn this baby off and let's measure the juices. So here's the juice made in the NC800, right? And this is reading at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and uh, tip this baby up and tip it back, get the extra juice out. And look at this, wow, it actually did make more juice. That's quite impressive. Let's go ahead and uh, turn these uh, both this same direction here. So you guys can see the difference. And so once again, measuring this juice, 61.5, this juice, 59.5. So this juice is two degrees warmer than that juice, and the pulp is 10 degrees warmer. Wow, completely amazing. Um, I guess next, I wanna go ahead and give you guys just a straight up uh, shot of the yields on both these machines. All right, let me show you guys the yields over here. NC800, look at how juice, how pretty that juice looks over on the NC800. Now it didn't make as much, you know, but if we look at the markings and we're gonna measure this a bit more closely in a minute, looks like we got like just under 600 um, cc's of juice. Maybe I'm gonna say that's at about, I don't know, 580 maybe. And then moving over to this juice, which is considerably darker, and I have reasons why that is, which we'll talk about in a second. Looks like it made 600 um, cc's plus a line or two, maybe 610. So 610 versus 580. So yes, a matter of fact, the MM900 did make more juice, but it came at a cost, which in my opinion is oxidation. So let's talk about it. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the yields here. I'm glad I'm doing this test so I, I know, and then you guys know the truth here. So what's going on here? So this juice is lighter, this juice is darker, this juice was actually even made before this juice, and if you just let this juice sit out for longer, it will start to turn brown. That is the oxidative process. Cut open an apple, starts to turn brown, this is oxidation happening. To me, I mean, where there may be some new nutrients created during oxidative processes in general, you're, it's oxidizing some of those valuable phytonutrients and phytochemicals which is, is something I, I don't, I, I try to shoot for minimally oxidizing the juice. So uh, aside from the fact that you're getting more yield, you're getting a more oxidized juice. Now I don't have an HLPC machine to like run all the different nutrients in here and how that varies or how that difference, difference. but I really like to drink my juice that's as minimally uh, oxidized as possible. That's what these high speed machines juicers do. And as you guys heard from my, um, you know, infrared thermometer testing, you know, this juice was a few degrees cooler, but the pulp was 10 degrees uh, warmer on this machine. So here's the thing, with every pro, there's a con, right? There's always give and take. You can't find that perfect girlfriend, perfect boyfriend, perfect husband or wife. That meets all the criteria that you've set up in your head. They're gonna maybe meet the majority of them and some of them aren't gonna be just right. You know, because the fact that they're trying to basically squeeze more yield out, it's creating and generating more heat, which is causing more oxidation in my personal opinion, based on my observations. You know, also, it's creating a little bit more heat than this guy over here. The pulp's 10 degrees warmer. I mean, it was notably different as it was coming out. Then, you know, this pulp, if I hold it in my hand, it's still cold. This pulp is a tad bit warm. That being said, look at the pulp generated, right? Big difference. This one made a lot more pulp here, and this one made less pulp. But here's the thing, right? There's infiltration of pulp into the, into the juice. So if you were to juice more than this, you will see this, right? So let's go ahead and pull this out, right? So this is the juicing chamber at the point where there's this line, this is the screen, and they're basically, because there's so much back pressure on this machine, it's forcing the pulp 
in between the screen and the outer housing, which you force enough in there that'll end up going into your juice and creating a real pulpy juice. So to me, to me, this personally means that it's like poor workmanship because it should, the tolerances should be t so tight that it does not infiltrate the pulp here, that the pulp is actually forced to go through the juice juicer and get juiced. So that's on the MM900. Let's go ahead and take a look at the NC800. Well, maybe there wasn't as much back pressure on this machine, but look, we have zero pulp infiltration into the juicing area where the juice comes out over on this guy. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if you guys care about this stuff, but this is, these are the things that I noticed because this is what I do day in and day out for the last 20 years doing juice tests. And check my YouTube channel for all my videos on this. Okay, so the other thing is, John, this one made like a lot more pulp than this, right? But here's the thing, right? This is how much pulp was ejected, how much pulp is still left in the juicer, and that's what we're going to find out right now. So if we take apart the NC800, you can see there's a little pulp here. We're going to pop that down. You can see here on the uh, juicing screen, there's a little bit of pulp here. We're not going to really crap get that stuff off the outside. We will pull this stuff off the auger here, and there's very little pulp left here, so it was pretty efficient in getting it all juiced. Once again, this is the uh, machine made in Korea. Uh, it's been, ma been making machines for many years. Uh, this guy, not a lot of pulp or anything left in the uh, auger housing there to get out, so we're not really going to worry about that too much. We are going to scrape down the inside of the screen here a little bit for the stuff that did not get juiced. So this is the total pulp residue or waste that was in the NC800 to the best of my ability. I mean, didn't get every last nook and cranny, but uh, you know, got most of it. Next, I want to show you guys actually in the MM900 taking off this end cap housing, right? Wow, look at this. That's a lot more pulp squeezing through the screen. So that means this is going to be a lot pulpier juice, right? That's impressive to me. I mean, the NC800 to me has a better quality screen. Let's go ahead and take that out for you guys to show you guys. Wow. So here's the, wow, if, there's the infiltration of the pulp that's literally being pressed around the screen. That's not a good thing in my opinion. And once again, on this machine, we didn't have that. And look at the, <coughs> the pulp coming out of the holes of the screen. That's a lot. Once again, Chinese made, Korean made, not to say that just because it's made in China is not as good quality, but in this situation, like lots of more, uh, you know, <coughs> pulp coming out the screen. That also may be because of the more back pressure, right? that's being in, enhanced, so now the, the pulp has to go somewhere. If it can't come out here, it's coming out of the screen, so you will get a pulp your juice, and that could be another reason for the higher yield here. But in addition, this is also, because it is scraped into the auger or into the screen there, also going to make your screen harder to clean as well. So once again, uh, maybe we will scrape this stuff off and put it in, because we could count that as pulp that actually didn't go into the juice, and this is a lot of pulp I'm scraping off here that literally has come through the screen will make the screen hard to clean and that's not something I look forward to and we will scrape this pulp off this screen significantly less oh my god once again I recommend machines that are nice finely balanced and I recommend them for a reason I don't make my recommendations lightly once again, scraping all that. Now, did this work? It absolutely worked. And on the get-go, if you just look, oh, yeah, John, it made more yield. But, man, there's so much pulp infiltration here. <clears throat> this, to me, is not good. So, like, look, first stage, how much pulp infiltration came out of the first stage, right? How much pulp came out of here in this, this stage, right? There's pulp, once again, creeping through this first stage of the machine, which basically should just be pressing out fresh squeezed juice. But because we had all that back pressure, right, pulp is now coming out here. And in addition, the pulp that we're scraping from inside the juicer, this stuff is super brown, super oxidized, right? And uh, once again, we got pulp, you know, right here inside the screen, quite dry pulp actually, near the end of the screen, but much more near this, uh, this entry side, um, you know, not as dry. Or the entry side has more wetter pulp, all right? So here, once again, a little bit more pulp stuck on the inside of the MM900. Once again, i uh, going to scrape all this stuff off to the best of my ability. This is not going to be perfect, but this is going to give us a general idea of the, the pulp left over. And this one, once again, has a lot more pulp in here. We're going to go ahead and try to scrape this down. Once again, the NC800 had less pulp in this housing here. So what does that mean? You know, that means it's going to be easier to clean because there's a lot more particulate stuck in here because it didn't get ejected through because we use that little green attachment that has more back pressure. <clears throat> all right. So now... 
this is all the pulp that was collected from both machines right here and here. So now if we weigh these out, uh, the pulp from the NC800 right on this side in grams. Let's see, pretty much got all that stuff right there. We got 179 grams of pulp on the MM900. How much grams do we have coming out? We have 71 grams. Wow, 70, wait, 70 grams? Wait, there's a few more grams in here that we didn't get out. 76, <laughs> wow. I, I will say that that's impressive. So yes, it absolutely got a higher extract of this pulp here. Uh, then over here, but here's the other thing I want to show you guys actually, we're going to go ahead and quickly uh, reassemble the uh, NC800 uh, properly. And one of the things that I haven't mentioned to this point is with these horizontal augers, not the vertical ones, don't try this on a vertical juicer, right? You can rejuice the pulp. So you know there's not a lot of juice left in this pulp if we squeeze it, I mean you can see some coming out. So I'm not going to bother. Maybe I should bother to rejuice it. We're going to go ahead and rejuice the pulp to get a higher yield. Let's see, I got these little cups here. We're going to go ahead and collect the juice from the second juicing of the pulp here. And the other thing is, who does videos like this to this extent? Share you guys with all this information so that you guys can determine which one you like better. You know, nobody. <laughs> I wish there was somebody I could watch to learn all this stuff, but I got to do it. <laughs> all right, so you can actually take the pulp back through and put it through the machine. It can go through a little bit hard and uh, difficult. And uh, let's see if this uh, creates any more juice out of this. Once again, we're gonna do the same thing over on the uh, NC800, this bigger pulp blob here. Feeding this right back into the machine. Always best to feed a little bit at a time so that you don't overload the juicer. And uh, rejuicing your pulp, pulp is not one of my main things I like to do because when you rejuice the pulp, it is a more oxidized, um, you know, pulp uh, and juice for sure, as you guys will see. And uh, let's see, there wasn't a large volume, so we're not getting a lot of infiltration. We are getting a little bit of infiltration here, which to me, once again, would mean non-tight tolerances. If you guys are into engineering, you guys will know how important tolerances are. And once again, that's why I like the tolerances of this guy here, where I'm not seeing any infiltration, even rejuicing this pulp, except I get, I, get I, I see some liquid infiltration, which is a good thing, but we don't want that pulp infiltration. And when you're rejuicing pulp, you may need to basically, seriously, like, hold this pusher down, and I know there's still a lot that's not going in the machine. Have some patience. This is running slowly, and don't think... Oh, I can stick a knife or a fork in there and jab that stuff down. Don't do it. You're going to ruin your juicer. It's not covered in warranty if you stick anything other than the pusher in there. Um, you know, if you did want to get more yield out of this, then stick a brand new piece of celery to kind of help jab in that kind of like rejuice pulp that we're juicing here. Uh, the other thing you could do is like a carrot. A carrot would work really excellently, a lot better maybe even than celery. But if you just let this run long enough, it will accept m the majority of the celery. Uh, once again, we have this crank down to the, the uh, most back pressure. This is also on number five, the most back pressure. And now the second time through this pulp coming out, the pulp coming out the second time through on the NC800 looks like, like the first time coming through on the MM900. You know, it's significantly dry. Look at that, man. This is like so dry, I could barely squeeze anything out of this. So, you know, buy the better juicer, or maybe rejuice it a second time. We got significantly more juice out it's not even funny, it looks like we got about another 70 milliliters. So add what, whatever we had here, what do we have, like 580 plus 70 versus 6, um, what, 610, and plus like maybe, oh my God, so like this juicer was not efficient at rejuicing the pulp. We got this much left. Rejuicing on the NC800 with a higher quality machine, better tolerances in my personal opinion based on my observations and even all the pulp was not fully juiced. So if you want to get more pulp juiced, then stick in the stuff that just came out, right, and break this up. Don't put it in super hard. Turn this on because now all this stuff is super wet, this stuff's super dry. We're gonna put the super dry stuff that's gonna help in, that push, that's gonna help push through that super wet stuff that didn't actually get to go through the juicing process yet. 
you know, to yield even more, uh, to get that wet stuff basically rung through and rung dry. Once again, we're gonna let that run just a little bit more longer, um, to, you know, to get the maximum yield out, right? Look at that nice rope coming out. Look at all that extra juice coming out of the NC800. And you know, there's, once again, there's methods to my madness. If I tell you guys something over email and say, buy this juicer, I'm gonna give you guys my best recommendation based on the information that you guys are providing me, not based on commission or anything, but based on actual results when I test the machines, like you guys are seeing. I mean, I get on my infrared thermometers, I do the testing on all the different weights and all this stuff, so you guys know the total truth, right? I think we pretty much maxed out the yield on this guy after running it, running that, that extra stuff that came through. This is now warm. Let's go ahead and measure this. 76 degrees, pulp coming out, you know. But basically, by rejuicing the pulp, if we did, if we did, once again, we're gonna tip that up, forward, back, forward, make sure we get not that many drips. If we did add this, but look at the second pressing, right? This stuff, super oxidized. I mean, you could drink that if you really wanna get the most yield, but second pressing on this guy. So this guy pretty much got all the stuff out first pressing, and the second pressing, we got 90 milliliters more. So now, if you add 580 of really fresh looking stuff to 90 more, uh, milliliters, what do you got? 580 plus 90, that's like 670. 670 versus we got six, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20 plus. We got like, oh man, we didn't even get like, uh, we didn't even get like 15 milliliters out of this one. So hardly anything on that. We're gonna taste test this stuff for you guys in a second. It's not gonna be my favorite. Once again, Look at the color retained. Once again, NC800 over on this side. Nice, bright, vibrant color. This guy is a lot more darker, all right? Next thing is, I believe that the MM900 put more pulp in the juice, which then would mean that it would artificially inflate the yield. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use these nice IKEA measuring cups with my fine sieve that I like to strain all my juices we're gonna go ahead and pour out uh, the NC800 juice very slowly so that we don't drip any. And we're gonna basically capture all the, all the extra pulp that came through the juicer, right? This is first press juice. Once again, nice, vibrant color. And definitely, there, was, there is some pulp in here. We're gonna go ahead and shake that out to make sure we got it empty. Looks like we net yielded approximately 20 fluid ounces of juice, approximately. Next, let's go ahead and measure out the um, MM900 juicer. Once again, this is also catching some pulp. And guess what? Just like I thought, oh my god! Insane! Significantly more pulp in this stuff. I'm going to have to wipe it out, man, to make sure we get it all here. Pretty much got all the pulp in there, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and shake down our sieves. All right, pulp, we're getting shaken down, and I wish I was shaking down the pulp for some money, <laughs> but we're just shaking it out for something more valuable than money. This salary juice, guys. All right, so uh, looks like we got that shaken down pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and shake this guy down. All right, we're pretty much shaking down. Next, we're gonna go ahead and once again take our scales that we're gonna go ahead and tear out and zero out. Now we're gonna check out how much pulp each juicer put into the juice it created. First on the Omega um, NC800, right? Tap that down, 15 grams of pulp created inside the juice, inside this juicer. Next, MM900, which the medical medium is promoting, but not John Kohler. <laughs> Tearing out the scale here. 33 grams, so twice as much pulp went into the juice. Now, of course, first time through, this juicer also went made 100 grams less of uh, pulp uh, than this model, but once again, if we rejuiced it, you could see the total yield. So, I mean, if I was maybe not so bright, I would add this fully oxidized juice in here to give you guys a total yield. I'm not gonna do that because once you put oxidized juice with fresh juice, this juice will oxidize even faster. So I'm gonna drink that separately, but what I wanna do next for you guys is do, got, do, do for you guys is the actual real world yield comparison after straining out the extra pulp, as well as showing you guys the yields on this 
and I think you guys are gonna be amazed. All right, let's go ahead and look at the overall real world results yields after straining out for the pulp and the juice. Once again, Omega NC800, my favorite. Looks like it's just under 600. Maybe we'll say that, we'll call that like, I don't know, 580. So it's pretty similar to what it was. Whereas if we go over to the MM900 to look at that, it's actually just under 600 now, so maybe that's like, we'll call that 595. So now actually there's only a 15 milliliter difference in juice yield, but also I want you guys to really look at the color difference. I mean, to me personally, just sitting here in front of these juices, the color difference is major. This one's really nice, vibrant, looks full of life. This is something I would like to drink. And if we look at this one, it's significantly several shades darker, looks a lot more oxidized. Once again, that's in my opinion because of the some of the smaller heat and more importantly, the uh, you know the, the 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 longer chamber time of the celery in the um, in the chamber as it's being juiced. In addition, second pressing this machine once again. If you don't want a second press, right? This machine made made very little on the second pressing. You know, uh, less than. 15 milliliters once again over on the second pressing of the NC 800 if you wanted to do a second pressing look at that man You got another 90 milliliters of juice, you know, that's maybe what like uh, Almost 20% more juice by second pressing so what, what would you choose would you choose a little bit more juice and less juice the second pressing or and, and more oxidized juice or would you choose a juice with the highest yield right here, NC800, based on my testing, based on real world, based on all the different data that you could collect, lower temperature of the pulp coming out, lower temperature of the juice by two degrees. Well, let's go ahead and talk about this more. All right, so there you guys have it, right? You guys stay to the end, you guys get rewarded. What do you get rewarded with? Well, you get rewarded with me taste testing the juices, number one. And number two, I get to share it with you guys my official results and my official recommendation based on this testing here. Once again, this is my testing, and you're saying, John, you sell the NC800, but you don't sell the MM900. Well, I would sell it if it was available to me. It's not available to me at this time because I want to make all the choices available for you guys, but more importantly, let you guys know the truth of, you know, of what happens when you juice the exact same amount of celery and my special techniques of reducing celery, which pe maybe people may not tell you about. Not te they won't be testing the temperature of the juice coming out that actually the medical medium says, you know, some juicers heat your juice. And yes, the juicer he recommends heated the pulp 10 degrees more. And from my testing, the juice was two degrees warmer. But for me, that, that the more interesting part was the pulp was 10 degrees warmer due to the excessive back pressure which once again is a pro because you got more juice. It's also a con because it did put more pulp in the juice uh, due, in my opinion, to the build quality, but also the back pressure on this machine. Um, you know, also the juice was a bit more oxidized. To me, every day of the week, I'll choose this method so I could have the most juice for sure if I want to rejuice that second time only and have the least oxidized juice, have a better build quality. Uh, that in my opinion will break less than the machine over here. Less, better specifications, less infiltration of that pulp here in my specific example that I was shared with you guys today. Tighter tolerances in my opinion based on the experiences that I've seen as well. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and taste test the juices. We're gonna go ahead and taste this the NC800 juice first. Most vibrant looking. Mm, that's a nice good cellar juice. Tastes like celery. Next, we're going to go ahead and try the MM900, a little bit more oxidized, in my opinion, based on the coloring. Mmm. If you guys were here, you would taste the difference. This one has a little bit more tad of bitterness. This one's, I don't want to say sweeter, but you don't get as much bitterness, right? Now we're going to go ahead and try the second press juice from the MM900. Didn't make a lot here. Wow. That's really nasty. That's second press juice, really dark. Once again, look at the darkness of this. We're going to try the second press juice out of the NC800. I mean, here's the thing. Both second press juices to me taste highly oxidized. And yes, still came out of your celery. Still better to drink this than to throw it away. But this is not my favorite. I do encourage you guys to drink this first right after you make it. If you do do second press, don't mix it into this stuff because if you turn this into here, 
this stuff is going to turn brown significantly faster. You're going to lose the amazing flavor. But uh, we will drink this right now. Mmm. I do also need to mention, second pressing has lots of pulp that we didn't strain out. And that's always going to happen on second press. If we did strain that out, there would be lesser yield on the second pressing. That being said, if we still combine the, the filtered uh, yield of the second press with the NC800, that will still definitely make more juice um, than the um, MM900. All right. So that's pretty much it for this. Now, at the end of this episode, I'm going to make my recommendations for you guys, okay? If you guys are looking to buy a celery juicer, should you get the MM900 that the medical medium recommends? Well, if you just want to juice once and not worry about it and not maybe have the highest, you know, um, have the highest quality uh, juicer itself, and you're never going to do the homogenization and make frozen fruit sorbets or nut butters or you're not ever going to have babies so you won't be able to make baby food, you might want to get this machine, right? It's still made by Omega, 35 years in business, one of the best juicers, companies you could buy, 15 year warranty, going to be solid, works well, you know, once again, that other attachment you can juice other things with. Um, that being said, my money, and what I'm going to tell you guys is, I would personally get the NC800, right? Why? Okay, well, it didn't make as much juice the first time through, but it made a more, a higher quality juice, in my opinion, that was heated less, which is the facts, based on my testing. It put less pulp in the juice by half, which is very important to me, right? Uh, made in Korea versus made in China, um, less, better specifications, tighter tolerances on it, 15-year warranty, and more importantly, include that sorbet attachment. Um, it's not that much more than buying uh, the unit over here, and you get a lot more, man. So that's my recommendation to you guys, and I'm sticking to it. You know, I've long promoted the NC800 as my favorite or the easiest juicer to juice celery. Uh, once again, check the links down below for how I juice celery in this, which is pretty much how I juiced in this episode. I might give a few additional tips and techniques in that video. Also, be sure to check my other video where I've made best juicer for celery. If you're still not sure on a horizontal or a vertical or twin gear juicer, which are the other style cold press juicers, which will allow you to create the highest quality celery juice and get the most yield out of your celery. So it's going in your glass instead of <laughs> out as pulp. All right. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, enjoyed this video, it took me hours to create. I got to get out to my garden because I got to be gardening now. Um, you know, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also more importantly, support me in my work. Use the links down below to make your purchase at discountjuices.com. This allows me to continue to buy my celery, to create my own juices, and more importantly, share the truth about these juicers to the world. You know, I'm not paid off by Omega to, to push their machines or to sell this model or that model. I mean, if the MM was better, this video would have showed it, and I would tell you guys that because, I mean, I'm a truth seeker, and I just want the truth out there, and my videos, they don't lie. I would encourage you guys, if you guys doubt my videos, buy both machines, do the same test, and you will get the same, pretty close to the same results. Maybe that, not that the exact same yields, but pretty much the same results that I get. Um, and that's what it is. So, yeah, support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. Much appreciated for you guys that support me um, so that I can continue uh, making these videos to basically share with you guys the truth without just saying this is the best or that's the best because I really can try to custom tailor each and every juicer that I fit to the customer based on their specific needs. And it's really hard to say this one's always the best, right? So that's what I think and that's what I'm saying. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days. You know, what new juicer, what new appliance, what new vacuum blender you will learn about. And if, hey, if you guys want to make a, the medical medium, um, you know, detox me, then check my video down below on using a vacuum blender. Using a vacuum blender is going from like a standard blender to a vacuum blender is using like a high speed machine that does massive oxidative damage to your food to a significantly slow, slow juicer. Uh, you know, to the vacuum blender that basically will increase, well, that will retain more of those valuable phytonutrients and phytochemicals. And once again, things will be less oxidized as well. So I think I'll have a link, link down below uh, to that video in the description as well. Um, also, make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. Once you hit the subscribe button, make sure you click the little bell. And also, please be sure to share this video with your friends and family and medical medium support groups, Facebook pages, and all these things so that people can learn about the truth about the MM900 juicer that the medical medium is now promoting. 
Um, I wouldn't classify this as my personal best juicer, but if he wants to do that, you know, he can do that all he wants. <laughs> also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are well of knowledge over fighter episodes at this time on this YouTube channel, dedicated to teaching guys and sharing the guys and comparing and contrasting all the appliances that allow you to eat more fresh food, fruits and vegetables. Put a couple links down below once again in the description to other medical medium style videos that I have made in the past. And I want you guys to fully educate yourself with my videos before making your purchase so that you are a totally educated consumer and exactly know what you're getting and knowing the benefits and know how to use the machines before you buy them. That's super important to me because I want you guys in the end to be juicers for a life. Once again, both these machines have a long 15 year warranty so you can juice for the next 15 years without any worry about the machine breaking and you being stuck without a juicer. Um, and with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.